I think in a certain way, especially for women, we're very much taught to focus on others. You know, it, it comes with that nurturing sort mm. of aspect. And Are you suggesting that men and women are different? <laughs> and I'm not saying men can't be nurturing. I, that That's not what I'm saying. But I think that... Um, I don't know. I, I think that men just have an easier time kind of getting self-focused. And I think that when a marriage breaks up, a lot of times you will see, you know, guys don't generally sit down and invite a girlfriend over and eat ice cream and cry while watching TV. That's just not usually how guys cope with it. I think that women in particular struggle with this more. I mean, I think that, again, I mean, I'm not saying that men don't. I think they do often also struggle with it, especially when, you know, I think the the left spouse tends to struggle with it more than the leaving spouse. But, yeah. you know. Or at a different time. Yeah, and in a different way. But I think as women, like, we're very taught, it's sort of ingrained from a very young age to care for and focus on other people you know you're kind of you know especially the time that like my generation grew up in and you know you're you're going to grow up you're going to be a wife a mom and you know take care of your husband and your kids and and this very kind of externally focused thing that isn't about yourself in a way you know that sort of propensity to pay attention to other people or put other people first we just naturally are then focused on other people as we're going through the divorce and so who is that primary focus your ex and so you become very obsessed with i never thought about it that way yeah you become very obsessed with you know what are they doing and where are they going and who are they seeing or what do they think of you or what are they saying or what are they and we have to start reframing that in. Was, I've seen guys do that. Yeah, some guys do. I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying it's more common yeah. in women. I'm not trying to be yeah. biased. I'm just saying it's more common in women because we are naturally taught to nurture right. other people. That's just something that's kind of, yeah. you know. And it a, might even be innate. Who knows? Right. Like, and so. Have that discussion. Right. So when you go through this you your chore in this is to get self-focused and i don't mean self-focused in a way that you're selfish and to the exclusion not self-obsessed not self-absorbed or self-obsessed or self-aggrandizing or any of those things but just self-focused where you're caring for yourself and you're putting yourself first because when people come out of broken relationships like this they are very much empty and a lot of people will say you know my needs weren't getting met in that marriage my needs weren't getting met emotionally financially physically you know any of the aspects that we rely on our partnership with our spouse for Mm -hmm. and i hear many many people say you know my needs just were not getting met and so you come out of this marriage and and you're drained you know you're exhausted you're depleted and so you don't have that other person there to pour into you. It's kind of interesting because I think there, there's definitely a balance to this. I mean, you can't get so self-focused that you're excluding everything else. But the more commonly, I see the opposite where somebody is so focused on their ex that every decision comes out of how do I cause that person pain? How do I make that person suffer? How do I pay that person back yeah. for all of their, you know, things they've done to me? So you care about them, but in a negative way. In a negative way. I think women <laughs> tend to focus. I mean, honestly, if I had to describe it very succinctly and say the difference in what I find men and women are focused on, women are focused on revenge. Men are focused on fairness. Hmm. Men want what's fair. A lot of women want to get even. Not all. That's not true across the board. It's not 100%. If you're listening to this and you're saying, that's not me, maybe that's not you. But I think deep down, it's like we want to hurt the other person the same way that they've hurt us. If you're in the situation where you can't disengage from a, a spouse that you're divorcing or is divorcing you, uh, then I believe that at 
some point, and I would say earlier rather than later, it's a good idea to start working on your own life, on yeah. your post-divorce life. True. And that's where you need to get focused. When I yeah. say self-focused, that's really where we need to focus. I mean, people do think of self-focus or self-nurture or self-care as things like, you know, um, you know, getting to sleep in or, you know, taking a bubble bath or enjoying a cup of coffee or, uh, you know, reading a book or, you know, whatever. And, and that may be true, but... That's a palliative. Right. But that's sort of like... Yeah. In the immediate moment. That's the word of the day. Palliative. Palliative. But it's not going to change your (laughs) long-term outcome. When you start thinking about getting self-focused, you need to get self-focused on your future. Right. You know, on what you want that to look like and start building that. Because when you figure out what you want that to look like, that's going to help you make the logical decisions in the divorce that are going to lead you down that path rather than just sitting, letting things happen to you while the divorce is going on. And then at the end of it, trying to pick up the pieces and figuring out if you can make something out of them. When you're focused on kind of the end of the last relationship and and it's going down and, and you get embroiled in conflict, you're suffering just like you were during the marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you focus on the future, you get this little thing called hope. <laughs> yeah, which is huge. It's huge. And there's so little of it when you're going through <laughs> this. There's yeah. so little. It just feels like everything is in the toilet. Yeah. So let's take the fir- I think the first step is just imagine it. Ima- imagine, you know, and I think that's a lot of what the uh, those um, those self-help pundits like Tony Robbins talk about because it, what they're saying is not extremely profound or inaccessible, but you know, if but it takes it takes a Tony Robbins to get that in your bloodstream, right? That that you have to have some hope and you have to have some vision that you're looking forward to, or else you'll perish. Right, right. Tony Robbins always calls himself the why guy. Yeah, he's like, I'm the why guy. I want to know why people do what they do, and when you start. When you start figuring out that why for yourself, that's what's going to give you that internal motivation and that internal drive to keep heading towards your goal. If you're just sitting there and the divorce things are happening and you're not focused on where you want to go, then none of that hope is there. And that's when you're laying in the bed for three days with no shower and you know right. all that kind of stuff that we do. You need to re, kind of reprogram your subconscious to focus on what you're trying to build, not what you're trying to tear apart. So if you want to build a life in which you are able to, to pay your own bills comfortably and, and save for retirement, and you're able to provide, you know, trips for the kids and you know, Christmas presents or whatever and and, a, and happy memories and stuff you know the you have to put that in your mind that's your goal your subconscious will start working on the details of how you're going to get there you are the captain of this ship right and you decide whether you want to be happy or miserable right you decide whether you want to be successful or fail right it's just a question of are you going to Put your mind to that and then map out some strategies to make it happen. Get some hope, you know, do a little dreaming and then do take some action to carry it out. Yeah, yeah, the, the action's critical. Nothing will improve your mood more than that. That's true. Action is the key to fighting fear, anxiety. All of those negative feelings are, are uh, quashed by action. We'll grow in number. Turn us to thousands